Joining us at the beach today is Jim McElwain. The University of Florida football coach. He is colorful. He gets a lot of sun. Let's talk to him about some other things. Can you give us a story about Nick Saban? You worked under him for a little bit. Can you give us a story that people don't know? I'll give you one. Did you know he played the accordion, that he was someone who used to play the accordion no. when he was younger? Give me one in exchange for that one. Well, I do know this. The guy loves listening to the Eagles, and he's got a little theater down in his room, man, and, and he rocks it, and it's, uh, it's something that he really enjoys. I gotta say, the most predictable thing you could have told me about Nick Saban is that he likes the Eagles. He I mean, that, that, that is the most Nick Saban but, but I would have guessed. It? It? That he rocks it? What does well, that I mean? mean as much rocking it as you can do with the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, he I imagine. It, man. What did the financial struggle look like for you in the early times of coaching? <laughs> well, you know, you never really worried about the money. You know, I think I, I still have a the first contract, $4,736 a year. But I also tended bar and worked at J.C. Penney, so you had to do what you had to do to make ends meet. Well, hold on. What department did you work in at the J.C. Penney? And how bad were you at that job? Oh, it was horrible. They moved me to about every department to hide me. I think it was, wherever the sale wasn't is where I worked. <laughs> what would you say was the hardest part of your entire path? Uh, anywhere along the line, what would you look at and say that was most difficult? Boy, you know, that's a great question, and as, as I look back on the 30-whatever, two years of doing this, uh, you know, there were some rough times, and, and uh, you know, I think about those moments, uh, you know, when we got let go at Montana State, of all places, a place that, you know, I grew up in Montana, but when they let our staff go, and looking at my three little kids and trying to figure out what I was going to do, you know, this is pre-cell phone and you had to sit by a phone and wait for somebody to call you and hopefully somebody would as you're trying to make contacts and I think the best thing that happened to me is uh, I wasn't sure whether we were going to stay in it but I actually interviewed for a Schwann's delivery job trying to keep, keep it together and you know what, I wasn't even qualified to be the Schwann's delivery guy. I got on you pretty good on the radio because of how you eviscerated Fred Taylor's kid on the sidelines last year. Any remorse about how you handled that situation? Yeah, obviously, you know, the choice of the words is not something that uh, I'm proud of, and obviously my 95-year-old mother wasn't either. Well, you know, we heard the story about your mother calling you. How do you respond? Like when your mother tells you, I think that what you did was wrong. How do you <laughs> as a grown man then answer? <laughs> Not very good. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Anytime you disappoint your mother, man, that, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the hardest shame a guy can ever have. Well, tell us about that conversation. What did that sound like? Put us there. Yeah, you know what? I can't because, uh, <laughs> man, that's a hard one. Wow, it sounds like you were genuinely hurt by that. Like the, you felt the need not to explain, hey, you had a good season and I was coaching him up, but you just, hey, I'm sorry I disappointed your mom. No, I mean, and, and you know, disappointed her and, and again, how I, how I went about it. That's all. Jim, my father's got something for you. Go ahead, Poppy. All Jim, right, let's hear you, it. Jim, can you tell me about the uh, first date that you went on with your wife? <laughs> oh, that's a classic. <laughs> you know, uh, at first date, I think we met... Uh, yeah, we, we, we might have met at a place uh, where we were dancing, and I think she actually got a little jealous when I was dancing with this other gal. And finally I said, okay, I might have got her now. So uh, that was a good thing. And I tell you what, uh, 28 years we've been married, and we just married off our daughter, our, our oldest daughter, excuse me, this weekend back up in Montana. And you want to talk about a special moment for two parents, man seeing your daughter walk down the aisle. Now that's something special. That's well, Jim, can you teach me some of your dance move? <laughs> <laughs> hey, only, only if we can do the salsa, right? You got it? The salsa. I, I'll teach you, I'll teach oh, you salsa. Right. There yeah. you go. Oh, God, you no, teach me. God. Here we go. Hey, you All right. the salsa, talk All right. about you going down the aisle. Pick All one. right. All there right. you go. I, I mean, Come on, Jim. Well, Come on, get up your seat. Go. <laughs> He's not you got to move the hips. He's, he's not moving anything. He's not moving anything it, at all. This is uh, good stuff. The, Strike three. Uh, <laughs> see you later, coach. See you later. What just happened? Get out of here. Goodbye. <laughs>